Wonders of Saint Joseph Part 5 Saint Joseph just and reverend man Saint Joseph son of David Yes indeed how great is the dignity of Saint Joseph in the litany of Saint Joseph we say the noble offspring of David and some translation renowned offspring of David either way the meaning is the same Saint Joseph is the descendant of King David he has a blood line of the kings what a noble father Jesus has what a noble father we have our spiritual father is a descendant of royalty the son of david this title of son of david is a messianic title jesus is called son of david 17 times in the new testament unlike jesus saint joseph is not the messiah but he is the only other person in the new testament who is referred as the son of david saint joseph is called son of david by the angel of god when he instructed him not to be afraid to take mary into his home why does the angel call him son of david especially in the light of the fact that it is a title that is associated with the messiah the reason is that the angel does it because saint joseph needs to be reminded of his royal ancestry at this crucial moment in salvation history saint joseph had recently discovered that his wife was pregnant and in his humility but not fully understanding origin of the child in her womb he is about to take action by separating himself from her and the child the angel has to remind him of who he is and let him know what role he, he is given by god in the coming of the messiah lest he walk away from divine mysteries and the vocational call he had been created for to fulfill in other words god planned for his eternal son to be known by those around him as the son of a man of the house of david this man was saint joseph the reflection that presumes saint joseph was suspicious of uh, mary's faithful unfaithfulness but as uh, we see the section of just and reverend man many other saints provide us much more noble and virtuous explanation for joseph's behavior saint joseph was in reverential awe of what was happening in mary's womb and he considered himself unworthy to be her husband and the putative father of the child he never suspected mary of wrongdoing on the contrary he knew of an, that it was a great mystery humble and just he planned to separate himself from mary quietly in order to not get in the way of the divine mysteries before he could take action however god sent his angel to remind him of his royal lineage that a lineage needed for the savior is to be considered the descendant of david king david saint joseph royal ancestor had himself once taken a similar course of action considering himself unworthy to have the ark of the covenant in the city king david himself sent the ark away for 3 months in second samuel chapter 6 to prevent something similar from happening in the marriage of joseph and mary the angel reassured him and told him that god wants him to take the child and his mother into his house saint joseph not to send the ark away saint joseph was not to do what king david had done joseph son of david do not be afraid to take mary your wife into your home matthew 1 verse 20 he saint joseph was a progeny of a patriarchal regal and princely stock according to the direct line from this it is evident that the dignity of the patriarchs kings and princes terminated in joseph Joseph son of David do not be afraid otherwise while troubled in mind you may fail to understand this mystery Joseph son of David do not be afraid what you see in her is virtue not sin this is not a human fall but a divine descent here is a reward not guilt this is an enlargement from heaven not a detriment to the body this is not the betrayal of a person it is the secret of the judge here is the victory of him who knows the case not the penalty of torture here is not some man's stilty deed by the treasure of god here there is a cause not of death but of life therefore do not be afraid the just and reverend man to be just is to be perfectly united to the divine will and to be always conformed to it in all sorts of events whether prosperous or adverse that saint joseph was this no one can doubt to exercise the virtue of justice as saint francis de sales rightly notes a person needs to live in perfect accord with divine will and in face of all sorts of even whether advantageous or adverse give god and others their due the church has always understood saint joseph to be just and holy man loving god and neighbor as he ought but it hasn't always understood the deeper theological significance of what these words actually mean especially when applied to the actions of saint joseph in the new testament it has taken the church centuries to advance in the theology of saint joseph that shows his greatness and his holiness Today the church teaches that Saint Joseph is the holiest human person after Mary and the most just of all the saints. He is our spiritual father, pillar of families, glory of domestic life, patron of universe, such a terror of demons, and uh, he, we can re-examine many of the Bible verses that are taught by the church to be true about Saint Joseph, as he confronted all sorts of events, whether advantageous or adverse, acting in accord with divine will, and gave God and others their due. 
he truly lived the love of god and neighbor that his son would always teach we have blessed jean joseph later state that who says what did he saint joseph actually do he loved this is all he did and it was sufficient for his glory he loved god without limit and without lessening this was his significance this was his life here below for this he has been loved immeasurably behold his glory for eternity go to him without hesitation he is all powerful in heaven as for his goodness you cannot doubt it when you think that he spent his life in the intimacy of the hearts of jesus and mary the most loving and most kindly hearts there were ever one of the most important actions in joseph new testament is his response to discovering his wife's pregnancy there are many biblical uh, uh, texts which explain this It goes like this now the birth of Jesus took place when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the holy spirit and her husband Joseph being a just man unwilling to put her to shame resolved to send her away quietly but as he considered this the angel of the lord appeared to him in a dream saying Joseph son of David do not fear to take Mary your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy spirit she will bear a son and you will call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins all this took place to fulfill what the lord had spoken by the prophet behold A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and his name shall be called Emmanuel which means God with us when Joseph woke from sleep he did as the angel of the lord commanded him he took his wife some other translations also put it that saint joseph desired to divorce his wife did you know that the catholic church has uh, given multiple uh, interpretations in particular the church allows for an interpretation that does not state that saint joseph desired to divorce his wife from the first centuries of the church history there have been three theories about joseph's plan of action when he discovered that his wife was pregnant all three theories have been held by various saints and scholars and they originate in the early church the first theory is the suspicion theory saint joseph suspects mary of adultery and as a result decides to obtain a divorce according to jewish law if he, a just man wants to divorce his wife because she has been unfaithful it required to stone her joseph being a just man does not want to stone mary so he seeks to divorce her quietly this theory was a uh, promoted in the apocryphal literature and held by several fathers of the church the second theory is the stupefaction theory saint joseph is perplexed and stupefied by mary's pregnancy but he does not uh, doubt mary's innocence he is dumbfounded and doesn't know what to do confused he decides to divorce mary some fathers of the church adhere to this theory and greatly promote it it becomes the most common theory and is known as joseph's doubt The third is the reverence theory where Saint Joseph discovers that Mary is pregnant but he does not doubt her purity and innocence instead he doubts his un- his worthiness and ability to take care of Mary and the child a just man he knows that Mary belongs to God and he considers himself unworthy of living with Mary he decides to separate himself from her quietly out of justice to God and reverence for Mary he is willing to live the picture so as not to reveal her mystery some fathers of the church as well as many medieval saints theologians and mystics promote this theory Why does the church allow for these three theories all hinges on the translation of the greek word apolloa the biblical scholars all agree that this word apolloa is a very difficult word to translate it can have multiple meanings and the closest meaning for a particular passage usually determined by the context usually apolloa can mean separate conceal hide distance oneself from or divorce interestingly majority of those who have translated the new testament from greek into other language chosen to translate apolloa as divorce however now the church has a much greater understanding holiness of saint joseph especially as regard his privileges virtues and wonders in light of this we hold it to be true that it really say that saint joseph intended to divorce his beloved wife no the church has a long way to go in understanding saint joseph and in the opinion of many the idea that he wanted to divorce mary needs to be reexamined now to be fair throughout history we have translated apolloa as divorce that did, did very bad uh, intent or malice uh, present in this no divorce is often a very valid translation of the word according to the context of particular passage however the only reason the word divorce was used in matthew 1:14 to 28 is because the church did not yet possess a developed theology of saint joseph the effect of transoli apollo as divorce set a motion a, se- a centuries long minimization of the importance of saint joseph in the life of the church so therefore joseph doubt instead is of more noble description at joseph's annunciation it's easy to understand then why saint joseph hasn't been loved as much as he deserves and has been little honored revered and imitated throughout history the big difference between joseph desiring to divorce his wife versus desiring to distance himself from her out of a sense of justice and reverence makes a big difference therefore the translation of apolloa does not mean divorce in light of what the church now clearly discerns to be true about joseph maintaining the position that he desired to divorce his wife very hard to reconcile with his virtues saint joseph intended to divorce his wife places the very foundation of a new covenant of jesus christ on shaky grounds divorcing mary would have been extremely unjust for joseph 
because Mary is innocent and done nothing wrong. How can the church call such a man pillar of families and glory of domestic life if the same man desired to divorce his pure, innocent, immaculate mother of God? For 2000 years, the church was wrong about a very important aspect of divine revelation. No, it doesn't mean that. Remember that since the New Testament was written, the church has allowed many translation of Apollo in the Gospel of Matthew. According to the development of theology, we need to re-examine and reinterpret this issue. What is it then that the church now understands to be true about Saint Joseph and the word Apollo? Many scholars uh, prefer to describe Saint Joseph's intended plan of action as distancing himself. Saint Joseph's supernatural faith informed him that Mary had conceived uh, the. By the Holy Spirit, he was afraid of the mystery taking place inside her. He didn't want to divorce Mary. He believed he owed to God the originator of mystery taking place inside her womb to distance him from her and the child until further revelation is given. The fact that the church allows for this interpretation, many fathers of the church, theologians, saints, and mystics have already interpreted this passage in this way, is what is causing many scholars to adhere to the last reverence theory. We have a French theologian, Father René Laurentin. Universally acclaimed as the greatest Mariologist of the 20th century, conducted a thorough study on Matthew 1:18 to 24 and concluded that it is theologically problematic to hold the position that Saint Joseph desired to divorce his beloved wife. How could a truly just man have desired to divorce an innocent wife? Divorcing Mary would not have been a just act. It would have been extremely unjust. Father John McHugh, one of the most learned biblical scholars of the 20th century, similar conclusion. as uh, father john saward a convert from anglicanism and a scholar of the highest caliber we have father ignace de la poteri a jesuit who says that uh, this concerning jesus the messiah the origin took place in the following manner his mother mary was betrothed to joseph but before they led a life in common she was found bearing a child in a womb by the work of the holy spirit But Joseph, a spouse who was a just man and who was unwilling to unveil her mystery, resolved to secretly separate himself from her. But as he had designed this plan, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said to Joseph, son of David, "Do not fear to take Mary, your spouse, into your home, for certainly that which has been begotten in her comes from the Holy Spirit. But she will bear a son for you, and you will give him the name of Jesus, for it is he who will save the people from their sins." Now all this happened that what had been said by the Lord through the mouth of the prophet would be established. Behold, a virgin will bear the, in the womb. and bring forth a son and you will gi- give him the name of Emmanuel which means god with us now when joseph was awakened from his sleep it happened as the angel of the lord had prescribed and he took his spouse into his home what a translation it reads somewhat oddly in places because it is a literal translation but it is by far the best translation of the passage that is available this shows saint joseph profound reverential love for mary and the child in the womb this shows that saint joseph is selfless heroic in his exercise of the virtue of justice So this uh, reverence theory has been offered and is the best translation of all the other theories. So therefore St Joseph is uh, demanding many of the bible uh, scholars and preachers and sermons and liturgies over the centuries to be possessed with theologically accurate and spiritually edifying um, passages and understandings of the blessed person of Joseph. So thus this word apollo as divorce is bad intent the simply lack the true understanding supernatural greatness of joseph and theology we can't change history but now the church has begun to truly understand the greatness of saint joseph and give new direction to the understanding of joseph as perfect loving union with the will of god as well as justice and reverence and uh, such an interpretation is theologically very correct the theological definition of virtue of justice is that it disposes a person to always give god and others their due in all sorts of even whether advantages or adverse Saint Joseph always did the will of God perfectly exercise exercise the virtue of justice so therefore it is theologically impossible to hold that Saint Joseph would have resolved to do something that God hates which is mentioned in Malachi 2 verse 16 for I hate divorce says the Lord the God of Israel and the one who covers his garment with violence says the Lord of hosts you should be on your guard then for your life and you must not break faith So Saint Joseph is undergoing a test. Saint Joseph's virtue and cooperation with grace needs to be put to test because God intended to make Joseph a new Abraham, a spiritual father to new covenant people. Saint Joseph passed the test by his loving willingness to sacrifice himself completely and God blessed him in a manner greater than he has blessed any other man on the earth. Needless to say Saint Joseph passed the test. Many of the fathers just beautifully describe for us how Joseph passed the test through the supernatural justice and reverence. We have seen Joseph's love, faith, humility, justice and reverence so great that at no time did he suspect Mary of being unfaithful for she was pure innocent and he knew it nor did he consider a possibility that another man had forced himself into her 
he was absolutely positive about mary that she belonged to god and god would take care of her he trusted god and trusted mary and to divorce mary would be to abandon her and throw her away in the god given marriage for this reason joseph desired to distance himself from her knowing that god who had brought about the child in the womb would take care of her and the child so therefore we need to see that saint joseph loved mary immensely and it would have been torturous for him to contemplate distancing himself from her but he loved god first so his immediate resolve was to give god what god what he believed was god due that is to distance himself from mary since she belonged to god out of justice and reverence he was willing to step out of the picture completely these are the actions of saint joseph that moved the heart of god solidified saint joseph marriage and made him father in faith so therefore interestingly what mary interestingly when saint matthew wrote the gospel he did not know saint joseph and he was not present when everything took place the source of the information had to be mary and mary did not tell saint matthew that her husband wanted to divorce her saint joseph did not suspect any wrong doing and knew that mary had conceived of the holy spirit he was afraid of such holiness mary didn't tell saint matthew that her husband wanted to divorce on the contrary she told him that her husband considered himself unworthy of the great role and desired to distance himself from her out of justice and reverence Did Saint Joseph fully understand what was going on in Mary's womb? No. He would not have had all the information needed to give a theological discourse about how God was taking on human nature in Mary's womb. And he, a faithful first century Jewish man, certainly would not have understood the hypostatic union or incarnation since only those who are immersed in the church after centuries of thought, prayer and discernment knew it. He was convinced what was happening was God's plan. He did not know how the child came to be in the womb, but he was assured by the saints and the fathers of the church that he never doubted mary was pure or that god was at work in her he did not doubt mary he doubted himself and his ability to be the husband of such a man the father of such a child the greatness of saint joseph is that he was willing to become the homeless wanderer out of love for god and mary he did not want to defame mary by divorce even a quiet one after jesus christ saint joseph is the humblest of all men and he was willing to step out of the picture and disappear if god wanted to remain the picture it would take a divine revelation to make it known With the exception of Jesus Christ of course there has never been a man so selfless and heroic in love faith justice reverence and humility as saint joseph god of course already knew he had the right man in saint joseph but saint joseph needed to hear it from heaven therefore the angel did the exact same thing when he put him to sleep and uh, spoke to him in the dream god let saint joseph know what he needed to rely on saint joseph willingness to always do the will of god Jesus himself would need to rely on the humility and the sacrificial love of St Joseph in order to accomplish his saving mission. There would come a time when St Joseph would be removed from the picture so that Jesus could teach the world about the heavenly father. But that time was not yet. Yet St Joseph had proven himself to be a man most reliable and obedient face of all sorts of events dangerous as well as advantageous. He he could trust God and God could trust him. Thus the reverence theory teaches us that in the mind and the heart of St Joseph God comes first. If giving to God what belongs to God required St Joseph to sacrifice a future with Mary then he was ready for it for God was first out of love for God he was willing to undergo a sacrifice greater than any other old testament patriarch or new testament mother God wanted St Joseph to be a new Abraham a man willing to sacrifice everything for God's holy will he rewarded his love obedience justice reverence and humility by confirming him as the head of the holy family father of Jesus Christ terror of demons and our spiritual father He reaped an unparalleled type of spiritual fatherhood and his children will be numerous as the stars of the sky. For God himself is the spiritual father of the new creation and he made him the spiritual father. God made him the increaser. Saints, theology, mystics have thought over the century that St. Joseph exhibits a perfect love, justice, reverential piety towards God and Mary. Give us a profound interpretation of this gospel passage. And today it is affirmed by the church. It is the greatest of all the saints the pillar of the family the glory of family life and after Jesus he is the most just loving and reverent of all men Saint Joseph our spiritual father is not a man of doubt who sought to divorce our spiritual mother after his son Saint Joseph is the model of supernatural love faith justice reverence and humility he is a virtuous gentleman whose faith is constant and pure let us now look at what the saints have to say about the just joseph Joseph was just and the virgin was immaculate but when he wished to put her away this happened from the fact that he recognized in her the power of a miracle and a vast mystery which he held himself unworthy to approach humbling himself therefore before so great and ineffable a phenomena he sought to retire just as saint peter humbled himself before the lord and said depart from me o lord for i am a sinful man and as the ruler confessed who sent a word to the lord i am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof for i have considered myself not even worthy to come to thee Or as Saint Elizabeth said to the most blessed virgin and how have i deserved that the mother of my lord should come to me 
in like manner did the just man joseph humble himself in fear to enter into a union with such exalted holiness saint basil the great says joseph discovered mary's pregnancy and its cause namely that it was of the holy spirit therefore he feared to be called the husband of such a wife and wished to put her away privately since he did not dare to reveal what had taken place in her yet because he was just he desired a revelation of the mystery Sin Ephraim the Syrian but he thought specially of sending her away so as not to commit a sin and allowing himself to be called the father of the savior he feared to live with her lest he dishonor the name of the virgin's son that is why the angel said to him do not fear to take mary to your home saint john chrysostom says o oh, inestimable tribute to mary joseph believed in her chastity more than in her womb in grace more than in nature he plainly saw the conception and he was incapable of suspecting fornication He believed that it was more possible for a woman to conceive without a man than for Mary to be able to sin. Saint Bernard of Clairvaux explains why did he Saint Joseph wish to leave her Mary listen now no longer to my opinion but to that of the fathers of the church. Joseph wanted to leave her for the same reason Peter begged the Lord to leave him when he said depart from me Lord for I am a sinful man. And for the same reason the centurion kept him from his house saying Lord I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Thus Joseph considering himself unworthy and a sinner said to himself that a man like him ought not to live under the same roof with a woman so great and exalted whose wonderful and superior dignity filled him with awe he saw with fear and trembling that she bore the surest signs of the divine presence and since he could not fathom the mystery wanted to depart from her peter was frightened by the greatness of the power the centurion feared the majesty of his presence joseph too as a human being was afraid of the newness of the great miracle the profundity of the mystery and so he decided to leave her quietly are you surprised that joseph judged himself unworthy of the pregnant virgin's company after all have you not heard that saint elizabeth too could not endure her presence without fear and awe as she says when is this to me that the mother of my lord should come to me this then is why joseph decided to leave her St Thomas Aquinas says according to St Jerome and Origen Joseph had no suspicion of adultery because he knew the modesty and chastity of Mary moreover he had read in scripture that the virgin would conceive and that a shoot shall sprout from the stock of Jesse and from his roots a bud shall blossom he knew also that Mary was descended from the line of David and thus it was easier for him to believe that Isaiah's prophecy had been accomplished in her than to think that she could have led herself descend into debauchery This is why considering himself unworthy to live with a person of such great sanctity he wanted to send her away secretly like when peter says to jesus depart from me lord for i am a sinful man st thomas aquinas further says joseph wanted to give the virgin her liberty not because he suspected of adultery but because out of respect for her sanctity he feared to live together with her in the mystical revelations to st bridget of sweden the virgin mary herself spoke of the justice and reverence of st joseph had exercised response to discovering her pregnancy our lady said the following from the moment i mary gave my consent to god's messenger joseph seeing that having conceived by the power of the holy spirit i was pregnant and that i was growing wondered greatly because he could not suspect evil but remembered the words of the prophet who foretold that the son of god would be born of a virgin he reputed himself unworthy to serve such a mother until the angel in a dream commanded him not to fear but to minister to me with charity St John Paul II says through his complete self sacrifice Joseph expressed his generous love for the mother of God and gave her a husband's gift of self even though he decided to draw back so as not to interfere in the plan of God which was coming to pass in Mary Joseph obeyed the explicit command of the angel and took Mary into his home while respecting the fact that she belonged exclusively to God St Francis de Sales says as regards his Saint the Joseph's constancy did he not display it wonderfully when seeing our lady with child and not knowing how that could be his mind was tossed with distress perplexity and trouble yet in spite of all he never complained he was never harsh or ungracious towards his holy spouse but remained just as gentle and respectful in his demeanor as he had ever been Saint Stanislaus says Saint Joseph's response to Mary's pregnancy is a model for us. Our spiritual father teaches us how to be just and reverent in the face of all sorts of events. He teaches us to give God his due even if it requires us to be willing to sacrifice everything we love. Our spiritual father teaches us that we should not act hastily or harshly when we encounter perplexing situations. We are to take everything to prayer and wait on the Lord for guidance and light. If we are loving, faithful, reverent and just, God will reveal everything to us and make us abundantly fruitful. Who was holier than Joseph who was purer than the most uh, holy virgin and yet he saint joseph wanted to leave her secretly but how prudently and righteously he wanted to do it he did not want to separate from her openly lest she be defamed but clandestinely 
that she may preserve her good name you ought to learn from this holy and just man although the deeds of others may seem evil to you and are said to be imperfect you should judge them secretly not openly and judge in such a way that uh, neither your conscience nor their good name be hurt if you do so you will not be lacking the light so that you may judge rightly as the righteous husband of the most holy virgin did not lack light for comprehending the truth about how she had conceived sin Romulus the Malodes a poet from the 6th century wrote a beautiful poem that depicts Saint Joseph's fear and reverence for Mary's mysterious pregnancy then Joseph who never knew the virgin stopped stunned by her glory and gazing on the brilliance of her form said o oh, shiny one i see that a flame and the hot coals encircle you it frightens me mary protect me do not consume me your spotless womb has suddenly become a fiery furnace let it not melt me i beg you spare me Do you wish me like Moses of old to take off my shoes that I may draw nigh and listen to you and thought by you say hail bright unbridled